We're going to get Earl on in just a little bit to talk about his stuff. A lot of people are writing to me like, isn't it dangerous that Earl's out there? I would say yes, wouldn't you, Gail? Yes. Yes, 100%. Um, I don't condone it while I do enjoy the shots. I, I am nervous about him doing it for himself, uh, for people around him, people he comes home to, for sure. I had to run out to the CV, CVS late last night, right? I felt so guilty and weird while I was doing it. I mean, it's like right down the block from me. But yeah. I'm like, this feels wrong to go outside and go into a store. Yeah. And in my case, I'm not worried about getting it. It's because of all the travel I've just been doing. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that I, I could have it right. and pass it along. I mean, I'm not ready for that kind of guilt. Yeah. You got to get a mask. No, yeah, they say they don't work. I just got well, a thing if, from Pit Doc. So <laughs> the only way it does work is if you have it, right? Right, exactly. So if you if you think you have it or if you have a cough, then you should be wearing it. But if you're just afraid of getting it, I, I honestly think honestly going out in gloves, like wearing latex gloves would probably be even safer than, let's say, just wearing a mask. Really? I and should so. I stop yeah. licking things? Yeah, I think you should. I think you should probably call quits on that. I don't like to change, you know what I mean? I don't like to change I who I am. I'm it's known difficult. as the liquor. It's, yeah, it's part of your culture and heritage. Yeah. Uh, the I got a, a, a thing that's from a guy in a liquor store. He said, this is a better time for us even, even than Christmas. We're selling more liquor than we do at Christmas every it. year. I feel like if you show up at somebody's house, you ought to have, you know, some Tillamore Dew, something. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a little you know, high end. Yeah. You can't show up empty handed, that's for sure. Maybe some Bushmills. Um, all right. So tomorrow we'll uh, do a little jumping around. I, th I think the phone calls have sounded a lot better. I think you've got that worked out now, Vito. Yeah. And what, you, what did you decide that it was? Uh, I'm not sure. I think there was just a few things like I, I have to really um, I just have to pay more really close attention to some of the phone calls and just I think we made some changes that made it sound better with no echo at all. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like you don't know what it was now. <laughs> I think that you have no idea what the reason was. Well, I think I we, can... we turned everybody like we we spoke yesterday about it, like turning headphones down helped. Um just keeping the callers lower and uh, and just making sure my mic is off whenever a caller is on. Yeah, your mic is a nightmare. I uh, I hate to say that. Oh Isn't man, that funny? I just I just got some new pictures from Earl. Um, these are crazy. He's down at the uh, the new Twin Towers. I don't know what that's called. Freedom Tower. Yeah, the new world trade, right? And they they put billions of dollars into this uh, lobby, the subway station in the lobby, and it's fucking like you see four people in this giant place. Um, let me know when we got him uh, ready to go too. Earl Douglas, uh, photographer of his generation, of his era. We have Earl on hold right now. All right, let's put him on. Earl. Hey, everyone. How are you? Bravo, Earl. Bravo. Uh, your pictures are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Uh, thank you. It's uh, It's been a very sobering trip. It's been very haunting. It's, uh, so you stopped drinking? <laughs> well, that and well, it's just... It's just been, it's been almost therapeutic in an odd way, but I feel like it had to be documented. It absolutely has to be documented because no one will believe us as time goes by that this actually happened. And well, it'll be in the history is, books. You know, and this is how stark everything looks and sounds. And like, you just hear everything now as you're walking down the street. It's crazy. Do you ever shoot any video, Earl? Um, not really. I did a quick video of me walking down the middle of Broadway between um, 17th and 18th because I, I, I couldn't believe I was doing it because I was just, there was, there was walking down the middle of Broadway, no cars in sight, no people in sight. I was like, I have to shoot this. I did like a quick 20 second thing. But other than that, it's been all uh, pictures. 
Um, now, are you scared at all, Earl? Are you frightened? Uh, yes, I am. Um, I think. I, you know, because the gravity of this hasn't really kicked in yet. Because people haven't been tested. We haven't really tested everyone yet. But yeah. when I'm out there, like I usually go when I know there's a very low, well, there is a low volume of people. But when there's a lot, when there's very few people out, so I have very few social interactions with people. Even when I'm getting to and from there, there's just it, it's what was that movie, The Omega Man, with Charlton mm-hmm. Heston. That it's a very lonely feeling it's uh it's like everything's going but there's nothing happening it's it's a very spooky feeling and then when you see a person you're almost startled because you haven't seen anyone for like extended periods of time all right now i have to gail we you and i talked about this we seem to be comparing ourselves to movies all the time because there's nothing else to compare ourselves to Constantly. you know what i mean it's yeah, crazy uh, because this feels like fiction. I mean, not only have I been doing it um, with movies, but even the other day, I think I had texted you that I, it had reminded me of like a children's book from my childhood. And then I got crazy trying to find that book online because it was, you know, so surreal. But I mean, across the board, I keep comparing this to fiction because I don't think... Uh, it doesn't feel real. Well, you know, when this happened in 1918, right, uh, they probably weren't even aware how many places this was taking taking place. You know what I mean? Like you would only know, what are you going to do, send a letter to San Francisco? How are things there? You know what I mean? By the time you're going to hear back, weeks had gone by. All of our stuff now is in real time. And also one of the reasons why I'm trying to stay away from watching the news regularly is there's always somebody on there giving the grimmest thing. You know what I mean? No matter what channel you go to, some people be very positive, but all you need is that one negative person freaking out. And you're like, oh God, you know what I mean? I don't need this. Last night I was, um, you know, I have, I was watching something and, you know, I've, I've kind of just tried to been limiting myself and, but last night watching this one news report and it was just like hot terror through my body. I'm like, how am I newly afraid of something? You know what I mean? Like, how am I getting more new bad news? Right. Uh, the more perspective you get on it, particularly when you start looking at when they start comparing to where Italy is now and where we are currently um, and just kind of how they see the trajectory of this moving. Um, I think that freaks yeah. me out. And then also... Like the idea that, you know, we don't have an end, we don't have a, a number to put on this. And this idea of this could be ongoing, um, like even yeah, if we right. come out, that there could yeah. be like another circumstance where they're like, okay, another outbreak, everyone back into your caves. And it's just pretty surreal. Uh, so yeah, see, that did me no good. I'll be totally <laughs> honest. I'd have yeah. rather just been fucking around and being silly. Uh, Earl, if you get coronas while you're doing this, is it worth it? Is it worth it to you as an artist? Uh, yes, it is. I think um, this is important, and I think it's important to re- just to, to really document the real gravity of it because you know we built all of these things, these beautiful monuments, and these beautiful, you know, this is the best of us, and then to have it all just kind of disappear like remember two weeks ago we were living our lives you know there, it was, there was a lot of hustle and bustle and everything else and then just that quickly everything is gone you know we're all in this we're all in these respective shelters and and not enjoying this we're on the brink of spring and you know that's kind of like a rebirth of everything and then to have everything empty like this and then it's you know, really it, weird it, to this enemy we don't see, you know, you know what I mean. It's just, I, it felt like yeah, I had to really document this, and you know, I'm taking as many precautions as I can. You know, to travel with a big tube of uh, with hand wipes and everything, and I'm trying to avoid interaction and just be very aware of what I'm touching or not touching. And but I, I just feel it's worth it though to document what 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 we're losing here, you know. And um, to me, it's worth it. I mean, I feel great, but 
uh, who knows? I mean, this is great unknown. It's all new. This is new yeah. weird to me. Yeah, that's the weird thing for me, too. I feel great, you know, but it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Uh, you know, we just do what we do and uh, keep it going on. But I do remember, like, when the first cancellations started coming up on different shows, everybody was pissed. You know what I mean? Like, no one realized that everything was going to get canceled. You know, mm -hmm. people are just like, oh, I lost the Tuesday night and uh, these fuckers. And then the next thing you know, just everything that anybody had is gone. So it felt at first more personal than universal. You know, uh, Earl's pictures are up on uh, our Instagram uh, page uh, and it's... Uh, you know, don't be alarmed by some of the things that are all saying we're not going to lose the buildings. We built them. The buildings are, are going to stay. <laughs> it's the it's the human beings. It's the human beings. And, you know, despite all this stuff that we heard, you know, you hear from Pitak, who's still saying 1%. You know what I mean? 1% of people will die from this, which is, a, you know, a horrible thing to hear. But any death n things are horrible to hear. I mean, would you get on a plane if they told you there was a 1% chance that it would go down? Um, Never. Probably not. Never. Probably not. No. But there's got to be some kind of percentage that you're still not happy with. Uh, yeah, sure. But it's, I mean, it's it's much smaller. I mean, I think uh, the the weird thing is also that you're not only, it's not about just putting your own life at risk, which is another interesting aspect of, you know, the quarantine. Yeah. You know, Fez had said to me, he goes, I'm sure I'm going to get, I'm sure I'm going to die from this Coronas. I go, but you're already, you were always sure you were going to die on a plane. Like each fucking plane, he was a hundred percent sure was going to go down. Um, and that's just the way life is. It's up to you which way you, you choose to go with it. Earl, do you have, if if you do have a book coming, uh, do you know what you want to call it? Um, I don't know. Working title right now. I keep I keep saying the new weird, and that's kind of stuck in my head. MPNYC is floating around. I haven't really thought of a title yet. And you mentioned Soho early out. That was my next stop because that's a really busy area, and like, yeah, strictly during like this time of the day where you know people are shopping and like you can barely move her in there especially on the prince street area i'm curious to see what it's like right now and or what is not happening right there and i mean it, it's it's crazy and it's you know and i always if i did a book i want to find a way to give some money to the service workers you know they you know all those people who are out of work and hold on for one second uh is that Juju crying? No, no, she's asleep. Well, who is that? Earl, is that you with a crying baby? Um, that's probably my uh, my niece. She was here with her uh, with her kids, so that's probably. Does she have Corona? <laughs> no, no, just being bad. Are they, are they there with your? Uh, they're staying there with your parents. Yeah, she went to check in to see if to see if everyone was okay. You know, like oh, uh, that was yeah. the other no check-ins. My, brother, my brother's coming by later. My sisters have called. And, yeah, uh, I I, don't, I feel like I need uh, I feel yeah. like I need to explain to the Douglas family how this works. It doesn't work yeah, best all, through check-ins. It works best from not checking in, Earl. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, well, they're all within. They're like literally a building away. So. It doesn't mean um, anything. The whole no. reason that we're supposed to do is stay away from each other. You know what I mean? So this is a, a dangerous thing for your parents that you're going out. Uh, but to have people around, it's not the best thing. Yeah, well, Douglas is kind of stubborn and, and bullheaded. And, and I try to talk to him, but you can't talk to everybody. <laughs> I don't know whether you even try to talk to him because it seems like you don't understand the, the rules of this. Yeah, me going out every night isn't, isn't exactly the smartest thing either, but... It sounds like a baby has corona. I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was Juju. I'm like, what is Gail waiting no. for? The baby no. needs her. No. <laughs> well, Gail, could you go check on Earl's niece? Um, I would, but that's uh 
really against what we should be doing right now. But okay, I, would I think I, I just there. heard a slap. I just heard. A, <laughs> no. I think I heard a church slap take place. <laughs> church slap. Earl, the police don't even have a have the time to come and pick people up for child abuse. This is the best yeah. time ever to commit <laughs> petty crimes and crimes against your family. Well, I haven't even explained the other weirdness that happened on uh, Tuesday when. Um, What's that? Uh, when my my father's my father's car caught on fire. What? Carbecue? Uh, no. Uh, no, it was it was kind of freaky because he was in it. He he missed what? it by seconds. What was it? Corona? <laughs> no, like um. It was like something electrical and it just sparked and then the next thing like the car's done, it's fried, it's toast. But he, he had a <laughs> uh, Lincoln Town Car. Nineteen ninety. Okay. Wow. Well no wonder it caught on fire then, Earl. <laughs> you haven't changed yeah, the oil in thirty years. Yeah, that, yeah, that was uh that was kind of freaky and scary for a second because uh no, I got a phone call about it, and then my father wouldn't answer his phone, and I, I had to run to the parking lot, and, and he was there, and I was just, you know, almost had a heart attack. It was just, my heart was pounding out of my chest as I was going to the uh, parking lot. You were like, I don't want my daddy to be burned up. No, not at all. Earl, let's be honest about this. Was he frying chicken in his Lincoln Town car? <laughs> <laughs> no, he isn't. No, he, he literally just pulled the car in. He's like, "Hey, I was just sitting behind the wheel, listening to some music." And then a woman was came from the other side. And he's like, uh, "You need to get out your car now. It, it's starting to smoke." He saw the smoke. He got out the car, and then he started to make. As soon as he made his distance, it went up. I, if you want to know how old school Earl's dad is, everyone else on the planet has a phone and earbuds. But Earl's dad, when he wants to listen to some music, goes out and sits in his Lincoln Continental. <laughs> so crazy. He still uses cassettes, too. Does he really? Yeah. Now, what was the last song you heard in there? Chai Lights? <laughs> Probably. Uh, it was either that or some Muddy Waters, Sam Cooke. He loves those guys. Oh, he loves Muddy Waters, huh? Yeah. That's how I became a fan. Mm. Your dad did it to you. All right, yeah. Earl Douglas. Uh, it's up on the uh, the Bennington Instagram as Empty NYC. But uh, Earl, you wanted to maybe call this what when things were weird. The new weird. The new weird. The weird. All right, congratulations. Be careful out there, Earl. Talk to you later. All right, miss you guys. I miss you too, buddy. Peace, Bye. Earl. Earl Douglas does stuff his own way, and his family does stuff their own way. The, yeah. His niece brought the babies over to check on the mom and dad when that's literally 100% the opposite of what you should do. Like yes. right away when this thing started, of course, I my mom and my sister, and she's uh, compromised. She's had, my sister's had some health problems Um and the whole point was, do not go near them. Don't let anybody else in the family go near them, you know, because they're healthy now. They've been in the house, but they can't right. be even exposed to one person. And Earl's family is just the opposite. They're like, I'm going to no. go over and check on mama. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I feel like they should change the last name of the Griswolds. They're just doing everything totally backward. There could be a movie called The Black Griswolds when things got weird. <laughs> <laughs> the new weird. I mean, let's face it. Chris Stanley doesn't follow one fucking rule, and he's following these rules. I know. Earl's he's family, the exact opposite. Fully the opposite. You can look at this almost as a goofus and gallant scenario, and for once in his life, Chris Stanley is the gallant. Yeah. Chris, what made you, for the first time in your life, follow along with the rules they set up for you. I've, I've been thinking about this a lot, Ron, and um, I feel like it's my reading of a bunch of science fiction over the years and watching some movies and seeing all these like global pandemics. And then when it starts to actually roll out, I start to think maybe I'll be responsible for the first time in my life and not I don't know, bring a family over to an older woman's house. 
just a um, crying uh, baby with a cold. Uh, this, fa- this family doesn't show up for Thanksgiving when they show up for the coronavirus? <laughs> I don't understand. That's a really good fucking point. It's a great point. You'd think uh, Daddy, Daddy Douglas would be like, there's still a turkey sitting in that refrigerator right now. I mean, uh, you know, I know that both of them have had, uh, his parents have had health issues. He shared that his mother has diabetes. I just don't yeah. feel like this is a great idea. I'm telling he you, I met, I met Earl's dad before, and he's kind of somewhere in between Rolo and Grady. You know what I mean? Just like an old school, laid back black guy. And the fact that the only piece this poor man gets, and you could hear the screaming going on in the middle of the day. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's got to go out and do his Lincoln Town Call, <laughs> light up a coal, and just turn on the radio. Cupid, draw back, you bow. And he's just sitting there thinking of another life that he never had the chance to live. <laughs> Why does Earl think that the buildings are coming down? <laughs> he doesn't. Look, the sad thing is I never should have put him on to describe it. I should have just let him. Yeah, the picture and speaks The other thing stuff. is. You know, now he wants to turn around and give away his profits to service workers. Earl, uh, you know, picture books don't make a profit. You just got a fun little thing here. If we do this at all, it's going to be for your ego. Nothing else. Mm-hmm. True. Earl thinks he's um, Spartacus. Uh, by the way, uh, since we went on and talked about the stand, uh, I just got a message. You're just a few hundred dollars away from their goal so thank you to everybody that's really oh, really that's nice awesome. it's really really cool um it's very very kind and uh you know dennis falcone destroyed destroyed uh jeffrey gurian and the same ex- exact thing happened with bobby kelly and rich Foss. we got to think of our next two people to be closer you know what I mean? Like, we want to have one really close match, don't we? I know. I mean, I honestly thought uh, our first one um, between Dennis Falcone and Jeffrey Gurian would have been close. Uh, well, it might have been close if we would have if we would have put other. You know what I mean? If we would have had a third <laughs> choice, everybody would have went. I mean, suicide got picked a lot by people. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and also, I'd rather just have the virus. But the but the truth is um, that if you take a look at this, it's not uh, we haven't had anything close yet. So I don't want to say yet before we get the pictures, but we got to come up with some two people we think is going to be difficult to choose between. And because uh, I know we got two people who's probably really hurt right now that we even put them in this. We didn't ask. We just decided on a, on their own. Right. <laughs> I am so embarrassed. I thought you were you were letting your baby scream. Oh no, I uh, I wouldn't have let her suffer that way. But I also I thought that maybe it would be clear because it it was uh, to me sounded like a bigger kid <laughs> having a tantrum, not oh, so I, babyish. It might have been Earl's mom just screaming <laughs> that she didn't want Help. people coming over. <laughs> She's going to die. What the fuck is he doing? Uh, did you see where Omar uh, praised Donald Trump, Trump's incredible response to this? No, the, I didn't. Uh, yeah, she's part of the Gang of Four. Um, yeah, she shocked the world with that one. The incredible and right response in a critical time. Um, but that's because, you know, he's ready to start spreading out the money. And she knows that the Republicans... That's supposedly something that they're against 100% bailouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going for a bailout. Yep. All those uh, socialist things everyone's afraid of suddenly don't sound so bad, I guess. Uh, who knows? Who knows where we're going to end up at the end of this? Everybody, you know, everybody who uh, is very young is going to have a totally different philosophy than I think anybody's had up to this point. You know what yep, I mean? I agree. Like whatever yep. we think is the response, uh, the younger people are going to grow up and go, oh, when I was, you know, in seventh grade or eighth grade or whatever they are. Uh, and I know I never want anybody to go through that again. 
um, this could end up being something that people start to get. Okay, now I get the whole global warming and climate change. You know, I get how the world is bigger than us. You know what I mean? We're not going to um, be in charge of nature. Nature, you know, lives its own values. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah. Who would have thought that uh, Earl's family would have fallen behind Chris Stanley and following the rules? Yeah. Uh, that was a big shock. Um, everything about it was shocking to me. Well, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Chris would have been down in in uh, Miami just fucking yelling on TV that, yeah. you know, that he's rocking and rolling and whatnot. <laughs> Crushing it, bros. Um, I love how just um, exhausted, drunk, and, and in such rough shape all those kids look, too. Like, they're kids, but not one of them actually look like it. Like, they look aged from what they're doing to their bodies. They're all very ugly. Yeah, everyone keeps pointing that out, that uh, they're a little rough on the eyes. It's kind of an interesting thing, and I think the stereotype of the, the MTV spring break was suddenly broken. Uh, they I'm thought it was the gathering of the juggalos and not spring break. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fucking funny. But the juggalos are closer to real life than anything that's ever been on on MTV. Believe me, I was just on a fucking cruise where I turned around and said, no one has body issues. No one is worried that they're too fat. I actually... Not a single person gave a fuck. <laughs> I actually saw uh, that footage of those kids, and I thought it was the Lobster Boy family reunion. I was shocked. <laughs> the one, the first kid's name is Brady Sluter, and like he fucking looks like a Brady Sluter. <laughs> Man, uh, you would think that Vito would be sticking up for these kids. He hates them. I never no. got into spring. I never got into the going away for spring break thing. Like I, I did not see the like allure and spending a bunch of money to go to an overcrowded resort where they're gonna like pack it in as much as possible so you can't get your free drinks. You sound like a guy who didn't believe he could get laid, uh, because and and where I come from, right? The spring break thing was something that we called Senior Week. And it was at the end of the high school uh, year, right? And all the kids would go to Wildwood. Now, Wildwood had an 18-year-old drinking age then. You could be 18 and get drinks. And there also were no pictures on license. So you could get a license from a friend of yours. So from about the age of 15 to 16 to about 19, I went to that every year. And it was... Uh, you know, a half a million kids, no one over the age of 23, 24, and we had the fucking time of our lives. The time of our lives. Insane. And here was the beauty of it, too. Back then, the Catholic girls didn't want to have a reputation, you know, of uh, sleeping with people. But they could go down here, and for the first time in their life, they got out of their neighborhood. They were anonymous, right? So if somebody from Upper Darby was with somebody from Lower Marion, that reputation wasn't going to follow them back to fucking their little Catholic school. It was a blast. Spring break is a fucking blast, Vito. I just, I'm, I was never into it. I you were fat. You were fat at that age. You were gigantic. I've seen no. pictures of you. College, I lost all the weight. Like I went to. You were the, massive. I went away for like um, after prom for a few days, and that like I like that. <laughs> after prom, stop it. It's the same after thing. After prom, where did you go? Staten Island. No, we went to the Jersey Shore for after prom. Jersey Shore, you could have been in fucking Lauderdale. You could have been in Daytona Beach, and the fucking was, weather is completely different. I was very fat. In college, and I fucking went to spring break, and I crushed it in Fort Lauderdale, Ron. It was the <laughs> best fucking no, no spring break of my life. There's no I believe him. 
<laughs> he was the last guy wearing cut off shorts. You would have been on fucking on the news talking so stupid and ridiculous. I like I don't know how people just can't relate to these dumb kids. I'm Brady, man. I'm Brady Schluber. <laughs> Tom Brady's down in fucking Tampa right now, just having the fucking time of his life. First time he's been away from Giselle and the kids for a while, and he's loving it. And he wants Antonio Brown there. And wherever he goes, he wants the rapist with him. <laughs> Brady he, loves that he, fucking guy, man. I think he's going to get him, too. I think after this whole coronavirus thing blows over, the NFL is like, yeah, Antonio Brown, come back. Make a living. Yeah, we've been through enough. We understand. I don't see any way. If you go by Gale's numbers, I don't see any way there's a football season this year. The first NFL um, person just got tested positive for coronavirus. I got I got information for you guys. Oh, I fucking hate your spy reports. They're so I'm fucking sorry. sad. They're so sad. Who was it? It was Sean Payton, coach of the New, uh, New Orleans Saints. Oh, my God. That means, that means Breeze got it. Don't, why are you I don't know who's worse with bad news You or Gail But both of you are like doing this show with Debbie Downers I was like We're trying to say. stay positive I'm so, I, No we are positive We're going to get through this NFL season And fucking start on time It's going to be amazing We're going to love it We're going to see Brady in that book <laughs> no, no Ron no, no 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 Did You, you know hear? that Italy had over 400 deaths yesterday Gail. I guess that'll be us in a couple weeks <laughs> hey, did, did you, you hear? hear that the the virus is mutating? So even if we find a cure, it won't last. <laughs> hey, did you hear the bad news? Seems like Vito was too fat to go to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> you have 20 seconds. <laughs> All right. 20 seconds. No. Uh, all right, horrible. that's it for us. We'll be back in here tomorrow. Stay cool. Peace.